Roughly five years ago, in my fifth year of secondary school, we were given a questionnaire on where we wanted to be in five years' time. The questionnaire was called Skills and Objectives. Many went for simple answers, such as far away from school as possible, to be rich, to have completed university, or just have a job. I put one thing. I put that I wanted to make films. My name is Alexander Hayden-Jones. I'm 21, going on 22. And this is me. If my dad had his choice, I'd be called Indiana, after some famous archaeologist you may have heard of. Or if my mum had her choice, I would be called Bailey, as in the alcoholic quarterback from the series Party of Five. Luckily, this was not the case. In my life, I have only ever wanted to be three things. Number one, a train conductor. Number two, a football player for Arsenal. And then finally, I wanted to be a filmmaker. From an early age, I was constantly ill. You name an illness, and I probably had it. I had grommets, which meant I couldn't hear properly for a good portion of my early life. Each week was a new way of being ill. My escape was films. In bed, I watched movie after movie. I was instantly addicted. The man to blame for this was my dad. This is my dad. People say we are alike, however, I don't see it. My mum took the approach of buying me notepad after notepad for me to jot down short stories and ideas inspired by the films I was watching and adored so much. See if you can spot them. I like these calm little moments before the storm. When it came to secondary school, it wasn't the illness that was the problem. It was bullying. I wasn't a cool kid. I was bullied for a long time, and when I couldn't face school, my parents would let me stay off, and I would relive what I did as a child. Hey, I met you. You are not cool. I know. However, this time I'd start with TV shows. I would watch in order on Channel 4, Everybody Loves Raymond, Frasier, Scrubs, Friends, The O.C., and Will and & Grace. This is my sister. We would make my short stories, we would remake our favourite films. My mum, my dad and my sister are just some people that would shape the direction my life was taking. In sixth form, in the first week, I had created my first short film in media studies called Construction Calamities, inspired by Charlie Chaplin and Laurel and Hardy. I made it with the two of my closest friends at the time, and we sent it on what's most important to teenagers, the pub. From there, with my close friend, we would go on to create a short film entitled Foolproof, inspired by the works of Wes Anderson and Quentin Tarantino. I bet you can't tell the difference. I would also create a short comedy entitled The Substitute, with one of my best friends, Dan. This is Dan. We would later go on to create a music video for the band Dog Is Dead. During this time period, it dawned on me, if I was to continue this, if there is any subject I could take when I go to university, it had to be film. I had to make films. In my first term, I would create a six photo assignment entitled The Hunt. It would allow me to understand the importance of the still image before the moving image would also allow me to understand how important story is. The project was inspired by literary works such as Dracula and Frankenstein. My second most important project at university was a Nordic noir entitled Paradise, inspired by the works of Paradise Lost by John Milton, as well as TV shows such as Wallander and The Killing. In this same time period, I would create several short films for which were inspired by several genres. The first being a noir inspired by the late 40s, the second was a parody of Mission Impossible entitled Mission Probable and the final being a remake of Batman v Superman. As from an early age, superheroes were my idols, from Batman to Power Rangers 
to Spider-Man, for which the latter is the first movie I remember seeing at the cinema. In a tense scene which the Green Goblin asked Spider-Man for him to join him, cinema goers were shocked to hear a small six-year-old shout at the top of his voice, No Spider-Man, don't do it. Myself and my new friends started creating several short films outside of university and taking a different career path. The first was a music career. It's so shit, it's shit. We created an EP entitled The Roast Population U with big hits such as Yeah, Ups and Downs, and the title song, The Roast. We were a bona fide success. We also created several skits, one in particular being a discussion of the benefits of university, highlighting the importance of verbs. Alex, yes, can you give me a verb from the Twenty University Dictionary in regards to this plan? Ah. Uh. The Swansea Dictionary. Every student gets one on the first week of university. <laughs> okay. The verb I would use to describe this is... Earthly. In my second year, I created three significant films. The first being Fleur de Lis, a heist movie. It was a nine minute feature that allowed us to understand working to deadlines, working with locations, However, it was an example of creative freedom having control, which therefore, we lost sight of what we signed up to university to achieve. The other two were mockumentaries, the first being about artists and residents on the last week before term begins. The other was an advert for the Autism Society to explore people's misunderstandings of autism in the workplace. These two were significant in exploring my skills as a writer of comedy rather than the deep drama that I had been used to doing. It also allowed me to indulge in TV shows that I loved, such as The Office. It was coming apparent that writing and directing was something I enjoyed and excelled at. I have culminated over the years various stories, from ideas as an ill kid in bed watching too many films, to making too many films, to creating several skits and starting a music career. However, for my final project, I was drawing a blank, until a dream became somewhat achievable. Out of all the scripts and books I've read, one stood out. This story was called Stationary Bike, by my favourite author Stephen King. The story was introduced to me by my nan. Her name was Margaret Fitzpatrick. She passed away right before I took the questionnaire what I wanted to do. She never saw what I did, or any of this. My first ever script I wrote was about her. It dawned on me, if this is the final film, it was to reflect who I am, I had to put everything into it. In reality, Stationary Bike was my first proper film. It was going to put into film festivals. It was going to be seen by my idol, Stephen King. It already had a strong fan base and a lot would have to ride on the story. I had to go for a real change in my approach and thinking. I had gone into a comfort zone of sorts with my films. I started as a writer, however, over time, I realized I was a director working off a script that I had wrote but I had to think of this project as not as my own, but something that had already been written by someone else. He wasn't a bad writer either. It would be my first time working with professional actors. I would later learn the true importance and value of collaboration. Working with them on the script and developing the characters, making them more than just a description on the page, rehearsing the scenes to where I wanted it to go. It was fresh and I was not overthinking what I was doing. My actors, Lily and Kowesi, were two of the nicest and most talented people I have ever had the honor of working with. With it being an adaptation, I also had to deal with the author and the author. What could I change? How could I put myself into the movie? The answer, Super 8. Every hero of mine, from Scorsese to Spielberg to Linklater to Kubrick, started with Super 8. To me, this was the first step to take to follow in their footsteps. However, to add a different dimension to the story, it would tie the story together. The story is about longing, love, and forgiveness. The story of Richard and his wife was the selling point. It was the emotional connection to the story. In truth, I'm quite an emotional person. I cry quite a bit. From up to how I met your mother, specifically season eight, episode 20. That's not important. 
What's important is to say that stationary bike was more than just a film. It was a part of me. There's no other art form that means as much to me as this. I wouldn't be who I am without it. I wouldn't be doing what I love without my dad who showed me his love of films. I wouldn't be here without my mum, my editor-in-chief and my drive to do well. My sister, who is basically the best person ever. My uncle David, who is always there for me to give me advice. My uncle Tim, who allowed me to pursue my dreams of working on a radio show about film. My granddad, who allowed me to support Arsenal when he supported Tottenham. And if anyone knows anything about football, that's a big deal. And my nan, who gave me the guidance to make the film of my dreams. Also, not forgetting Daisy the dog. But what's next? When I was thinking of a title for this video, I thought about this boy, a song by the Beatles, for which my mum used to sing to me as a baby. It was also the title of the script I wrote about my nan. However, skills and objectives was the perfect way of saying what I needed to say. The first part of the questionnaire was, where do you want to be in five years time? And the second part was, where do you want to be in 10 years time? Where do I want to be when I'm 26 going on 27? I could go for a standard answer, a job, a house, a car, or to be rich again. However, my answer is this. Where do I want to be? I want to be doing what I love, whether that be making films, big or small. For me, all for an audience. My name is Alexander Hayden Jones, and this is me. In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.